Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode. Today we're going to make a colourful waterfall using the generative art project created for this series. If you want to skip ahead and check out the code, it's available from the GitHub link in the description of this video, and you can switch to the branch that contains the code by following the instructions in the documentation. The first thing we want to do is add the rand package into our cargo.toml file. This will be needed to add some randomness to our generated art. In this circumstance, we're adding version 0.8.5. Then we go to the main.rs file in the source folder and we need to import our rand library for use by putting use rand prelude star, which will import everything in the prelude namespace. Then we need to set up our consts, changing the number of frames to 100 and the width and height to 300 and 200 respectively. We also change the number of repetitions to 10. And we create a const called size of type u32 and a value of 5, which is the width of the pixels for each color channel. Next, we create a struct called color point. We add an attribute of name color and type RGB with a subtype of U8, which is the color of the channel. And then we create an attribute called height, which is the current distance from the top of the lead point of the channel. This is of type U32. And finally, we add a multiplier of type U32, which will allow some channels to run at different speeds than the others, increasing the randomness. Now we need to set up our channels before the frame calculations, so we scroll down to just below where we created the output buffer and just before the frame generation loop. And we create a variable of type vec, short for vector, with a subtype of color point and initialize the vector with the new method. Then we calculate the number of droplets by dividing the width by the size of each droplet. And we create our random number generator by calling rand thread rng. Now we create a loop from zero to the number of droplets, and we create a random number by calling rng.gen. Then we create a random height by multiplying rand, a random number between zero and one, by the height, meaning that each channel will start from a different random height, not forgetting to cast the result back to u32. Then we generate the red component of the random color by again calling the random number generator, or rng, dot gen and multiplying by 200 then adding 55, meaning the range will be between 55 and 255. And we do the same thing for the green component. And finally, we calculate the random value for the blue component in the same way. And we need to create a random multiplier which controls the speed of the channel by multiplying our random number by 2 and adding 1, giving a range of 1 to 3. And with all of those random values calculated, we can push the next droplet to the vector by calling droplets.push and passing in the values of color, height and multiplier. After we've created the data for each channel, we just need to calculate the base fall speed, which is the height, as f64, divided by the number of frames, as f64, meaning we'll get exactly one loop for every channel with a multiplier of 1, 2 for a multiplier of 2, and so on. Then we scroll down to the area marked to do, put your code here. And we create a variable called count with an initial value of 0. And we create an iterator by using for col underscore point in droplets dot iter mute. This is to loop through every droplet in the vector. We start by updating the height of the droplet by adding the fall speed cast to u32 and multiplied by the multiplier for the channel. Then we check to make sure the height has not gone higher than the height of the image, and if it has, we simply subtract the height of the screen to wrap it around. And we calculate the X position by multiplying the current count by the size of each channel. Then we loop through every X value from the starting point to the starting point plus the size of the channel. And inside this loop we do the same for the Y position. We shouldn't be in this position, but it's always a good idea to check that we are within the bounds of the image to prevent a panic later. And then we call our image.putPixel, passing in the X value, the Y value, and the color of the particular channel we're currently processing. Finally, we must remember to update the count of the channels to make sure the next one is drawn in the correct location, by adding 1 to the count. 
So we save that and call run underscore build.sh from the terminal, and this will call Docker to build the GIF and MP4 for us. This may take a few minutes. And when it's finished, we can go to our data outputs folder and see the GIF and MP4 there. First, we click on the GIF and we can see it's generated as we'd expect. And we can click on the video and see that that has also rendered correctly. And there we have it. We've created a colorful waterfall from randomly generated values that we can rerun to get a new set of random colors and speeds. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so that you get notified when the next video is out. If you create your own versions, please post a link in the comments and let me know. If you create any other cool variations, please also let me know or submit a pull request on the repository. I'd love to showcase things people have made. For now though, I wish you a good day, hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.